Hey guys, Ironson Auditor out with you. Today's the first day of the ride along. There's the car I've been in. And here is the officer that I was riding with, Captain Chad Yu. And uh, pretty sure everybody knows him, Legicator himself. And while we were standing here doing absolutely nothing, cause it's kind of a slow day and some rain, figured that we'd ask him some questions if we could. So we'll start with uh, uh, who you are, your rank, your name, all that fun stuff. Sure. Uh, my name is Chad Yu. I'm a, a captain with the City of Ironton Police. Um, uh, I'm actually assigned to patrol division, so I'm a supervisor on evening shift. How long have you been a officer? I've uh, worked for the city for about 15 years. 15 years. Well, that's more than a couple, then, isn't it? Yeah. Do you like Do you like being an officer? It has its ups and downs. There are times that it's rewarding, and other times it makes me want to pull my hair out. Well, tell me about one of those rewarding times. Um, Any time that we're able to see something positive happen, um, it's it's a good feeling. Um, Any time that uh, there's certain calls, and I don't want to bring anything specific up, you know, the, we'll leave those things up to private, but let's just say there's times where I really felt like being involved in this job and or involved in something about this job has been very rewarding. Um, able to see some really good things happen to people um, just because of the community and the, the unity of such. Um, and it's just a really good feeling at the end of the day when you get to go home. What do you like most about being a police officer? Uh, not <clears throat> Probably my greatest um, reward is uh, I was never in the military. I never served in the military. But I'm a huge constitutionalist. I'm a huge um, American freedom advocate of the real deal. Um, and I was able to take an oath to defend the Constitution. And that really does weigh heavy with me. And to know that not only now at this point as a captain do I get to do so, but I get to teach the younger guys below me as well. So it's kind of rewarding to see them kind of grow, feel in that same way that I do. So you don't have backroom classes about how to violate rights and how to skirt around them? <laughs> no, no. Despite what a lot of uh, YouTubers want to make you feel, we, we don't actually come out here to try to violate people's rights. While we're here, what, what all do you all carry with you? What's uh, Everybody's kind of different. Got? We have a certain few certain things that we do carry. Um, these are our body cams. Um, and the idea with that is obviously it allows for our transparency. Uh, it, it defends us as well as the public. Uh, it doesn't hide anything. So while we're on that body cam, um, is that something y'all can just download here and change at will? How does that work? No, um, we don't actually do that. The the company that actually provides the body cam service has control of all that. So that gets sent to a third party. There's yes. no way that you can delete or change or Not that I'm modify body cam footage. Not that I'm aware of. I know there's been a lot of uh, accusations of that. That's why I was curious. Not necessarily in this department, but I know nationwide I've heard that. So. And I can't speak for everybody else. I just know the ones that we have um, and the training that I've been given on it is basically I can go in and review it. As a supervisor, I can go in and review and watch cameras for uh, everybody in the department, um, but I can't make any changes to anything that I'm aware of. So what what, what kind of a pistol do you carry? There? Uh, that's Glock 17. 17, well mine's a 19, so that was just a best step up, I think, from mine. Yeah, just the full size version. We're all uh, issued the Glock 17s, um, and each officer usually carries two spare magazines, so we have a total of three magazines. Um, some of the guys carry you know, the tasers, some of the guys carry pepper spray, um, or the ass batons. I don't. Um, I think as you get older, you kind of want the, to carry less on your belt, um, but I don't carry a taser and I don't carry pepper spray. I, I just, I, I've found that I've been able to handle most situations. How heavy is the vest? It's pretty heavy. With the, with the plates in it, with the rifle plates in it, uh, if you actually put all the AR-500 plates in it, it's about 40 pounds. There was one question one of my subscribers wanted to know. Sure. Um, does race and or sex come into play? Do you treat people the same regardless or is there a difference when it comes to... I'll be honest with you, in 15 years, I can honestly say, and I mean this with 100% certainty, I have never cared what color your skin is, what your sexual orientation is, 
where you are from, how you speak, I don't care. If you treat me with respect, if you're kind to me, I'm going to be kind to you back. And I absolutely not only expect my men to, I demand my men to do the same thing. Um, we don't care anything about other than you're either breaking the law or you're not. And even if you're breaking the law, doesn't mean that we consider you an enemy. We don't. We just, certain things in order to defend and uphold the Constitution, we have to make sure that a law that's being broken isn't violating somebody else's freedoms and liberties. And that's what it's all about. That's the way that we do things. I heard you say in one of your videos that you always tell your guys that, uh, how do you say that, that first and foremost is uh, to preserve yeah. the safety? When, when I took my oath, I took my oath in 2000, well, actually, I took my oath in the city in March of 2008, um, but I worked a little bit before that. But um, <clears throat> when I took that oath, I meant it, and I meant it for reasons that's probably not real normal to hear, at least publicly um, displayed, but I will say, I preach to my men that our main objective is to maintain and preserve public peace. Our main job is to guarantee public peace by upholding and defending the Constitution, by guaranteeing that freedom uh, is a, a safeguard for everybody. Uh, the law is just put in place in order to, to guarantee that nobody has an advantage of freedom over the other. Are there any, uh, I don't want to use the word crimes, I'm going to go with violations here because obviously a crime is something completely different. Uh, violations that, you, that you're that you like forced to make an arrest on that you absolutely hate, that you wish that maybe you didn't? Um, Does that type of thing exist? There, I, I will admit there are certain, in the state of Ohio we have a mandatory arrest for domestic violence. Um, I'm a firm believer that domestic violence is a very bad thing, that um, the, the potential for it escalating and, and, and becoming even more violent is is obviously there because of you know you're very passionate about somebody that you maybe share a home with or whatever um, but there are times in which statutory law you know will define certain laws that you have to make an arrest based on the elements of the law but doesn't necessarily mean you agree with them I can ultimately say in my 15 years of doing this I have arrested people that I didn't want to how far does officer discretion go Generally speaking, crimes against society, meaning that traffic violations to a certain extent, um, stuff that happens against society, we have a little bit of discretion. Um, but crimes against persons, you know, for instance, if somebody were to assault you, I have no discretion on that. If you tell me you want to file charges and I have the elements there to determine, so I have to act on that. I've heard it's common knowledge cops love donuts. If that's so, where do we get the best ones? <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll tell you. What, I've said this several times. Actually, man, that's like one of the most common things I get asked as a police officer. I I have sworn off donuts. <laughs> when I graduated the academy, I've maybe eaten donuts like twice because I'm guaranteed. I was like, you're not going to be thrown into that group. So that's kind of been my practice anyway. You ever had to discharge your firearm on scene? Uh, I have had to put animals down. I've never, uh, I, I pray God protects me, and God has protected me thus far, that I've never had to ever hurt anybody like that. And I pray every day that I would never have to take anybody's life. Um, but I have had to put animals down that's obviously, you know, is a, a mercy thing. Is it common that you might face a moral dilemma sometimes with trying to enforce law and, and preserve rights? Is there ever an issue? Um, morally, I could see where that could be. You know, like I said, I have arrested people before that I didn't necessarily agree with, um, but based on the elements, you know, I've had to do it. And I've never been in a situation where I've consciously um, violated anybody's rights. If I feel like it's a violation of constitutional freedoms, that, that trumps everything. What about false reports? you have is that a common thing is it not a common thing that people might try to file a false police report and if so what do they do about that um i i mean i've seen i've seen some stuff that i know that i've taken reports on that i'm going are you sure that's the way that happened um generally speaking if it's something that uh, i can take a report and just kind of document that it happened then i'll do it just to, to kind of guarantee that everybody feels like they're they're safe and covered um, but as far as um, there is, obviously there is laws that, that protect against that. 
Um, it's generally something that I don't like to really get involved in simply because um, I don't want to ever take the chance on being wrong on something like that. So I, I, I would rather not, I would rather play on the, the, the safe side. How many times have you arrested the same person? Is there a person that you can, I mean, you, know, you don't have to give me the person, but I mean, is there like, you know, a number of times that you've arrested the same person over and over again? Absolutely. There is, um, there is some guys that I've arrested so much, like I've literally pulled up to them and tell them, get in the car. Just get in the car. <laughs> have they been arrested so many times they just generally get in the car? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. It's happened several times. How about the uh, drug trafficking through here with, you know, the people that live here, we know that there's like a super highway that runs from like out of Detroit straight through here and from other areas from south that come up this way. How do you think that affects us here? Is that something you deal with? I mean, I know I've seen them out on a lot of drug stops. So. A lot of the times that you see our guys on stops, <clears throat> um, they might be working some type of crime prevention type thing where they're essentially they're either doing like criminal patrol type things where they're looking for possible drugs or um, they're investigating something a little further after a traffic stop. But generally speaking, I never dreamed when I was growing up that the drug problem, I guess I was sheltered maybe as a kid, I, I don't know, but I never really had an understanding for just how bad it really is and how bad it really can get. Um, but there's a lot of programs that are kind of in place and a lot of different agencies to get involved, whatever. And I think, I want to be careful I say this, but I, I feel like we're making the proper steps and advancements that we might actually be doing pretty good with it at times. Um, but to say that there's not a huge drug issue wouldn't be fair. There is a huge drug issue everywhere, but specifically, I'm not going to say that it's not here. It certainly is. Now, just for a, uh... <laughs> I don't know if anybody will believe a word you're saying since you have a badge on. A lot of people on uh, that like to watch the audits don't uh, don't care much for what police officers have to say. But am I on your payroll? <laughs> if do, you are, do, do I come in here to secret <laughs> meetings and we stage stops because I've been accused of that? I, not that I'm aware of. I mean, I. I if, sometimes think I'm barely on the payroll, though, so it's kind of hard to say. But I no, was, I was not. thinking I wanted to raise from zero to whatever it is I'm going to get paid for yeah, sure. Yeah, me too. Me too. Well, I appreciate the opportunity for sure. the interview. I'm going to cut it off now, guys, and uh, we're going to get back in the car, I assume, and go see what we can see. So far, we haven't seen anything, but when we do, you will. You know, you'll see it as I see it and hear it as I hear it. So for the moment, Irons and Auditor out, and we'll catch you on the next run.